Hi, everyone. Uh, maybe I already present to most of you one hour ago to, during the talk. But I'm David Consoli. I'm also working with Tom at OpenJob. Um, I didn't really prepare slides for this workshop because it's more hands on. But I prepared the Collab notebook that you can find on Mattermost if you are part of the channel. Um, if not, I don't know how to give you the code, but I think most of you should have access. And just to introduce a bit, I will recycle the some slides from the previous presentation. What I worked on is mainly um, reconstruction and preprocessing of Landsat data. And as most of you may know, most of images are corrected by the presence of clouds and this makes the data less usable. So what we do is we, we screen out the clouds, some other artifacts, and we aggregate them temporarily and we do some reconstruction. Um, we produce the entire Landsat uh, data set using uh, the products from GLAD already available. This is quite a big amount of data. It's about one terabyte for entire world last 26 years, uh, six images per year, 10 series, and all the bands, seven bands plus one QA. And we are currently hosting it in our own cloud storage, to which we now give you access. Uh, we, If you have already opened the um, notebook, you may see from here this nice link over there. I mean, it's a series of links depending on the temporal selection and on the tile that we want to use. And you you should be capable of accessing the data. You, If you want, you can even download it. The speed will not be the best since we, it's our server are uh, fast for internal connection, but not much for outsourcing for now. And what I want to show you today, it's related to the use case three for land degradation neutrality. We are collaborating with Mirova and UNCCD for developing some data and tools for land degradation neutrality at 30 meters, since currently most of the products are at 300 or 250 meters. And this is quite limiting for small plots of data we, for instance, uh, some farmers that have one hectare of of data and they need to report their degradation neutrality for having founds. And this is quite connected with uh, the methodology that is used in Transert. That some of you may know if it's if if you're into land degradation as well. Um. Substantially for now, what I did uh, collaborating with some project in land degradation neutrality is to replicate their methodology, and but using lots of data instead of MODIS. And this land degradation neutrality is composed with, by three sub indicators. One is related to land cover, and one is related to soil carbon, and one to productivity. Land cover needs to be reported every four years, and uh, usually it's not a main concern. You can easily find some land cover that fits their needs. Um, soil carbon instead should be sampled physically, and so it's not what are we going to do today. Um, what we are going to focus instead is on the productivity layer that should be using a net primary productivity, but for most of the cases in which um, the data is not available, what is done is to use NDVI, even though it's quite limiting approach. But this is also done because the land degradation neutrality needs to be assessed in a long time range, usually 15 years prior to the target year. And within the productivity sub-indicators. We have three other flags uh, that are involved. 
one is trajectory, uh, one is performance, and one is state. And what we are going to do in these uh, 20 minutes that we are left is try to produce this using a library that we are currently working on. Uh, I also share the link. This is even easier to share, let's say. It's a um, scikit map. We call it out of scikit-learn and other um, scikit libraries in Python. And the main uh, branch is still purely Python based. Well, we are now currently working in our production code using C++, but we still keep um, an interface to Python. And we are trying to find a balance between usability and performance, uh, not always with uh, success, mainly um, in terms of usability. So we are trying also to to show you a bit the code in this way, maybe we can have some feedbacks and try to find a better interface for users. And so if you are in the notebook already, you can clone it or modify it on the fly. You should be, even with a free collab, you should have uh, 12 gigabytes of RAM at disposal. It's enough to work with about half a Landsat tile. So still quite enough for didactic. Uh, first, it requires to install some libraries. I found this equilibrium. It's only two or three libraries that you need to install. So if you are in there, let's uh, run the first cell. Hey, do we need to clone the notebook to our local? Otherwise, we are working on the same. You you don't need to. So you if you take the link I sent, you only have the visualization right. So oh, if okay. you do any modification, it will apply on your working environment, but you cannot save. You, you can try, but you cannot save. Uh, if you want to do some modification that you want to keep, clone it, it will be there. I mean, it's for free, so you oh, I can see. clone it. But thanks for asking. Um, yeah, so if you are running the command, it will take a bit to install all this stuff. So I will entertain you a bit more with the data structure. Uh, what we are using now, it's file the data. Each tile is about, no, not about, it's 4,000 for pixel by 4,000 for pixel. And globally, we have something like, uh, da, da, da. Hmm. let me show it. Do you also see QJS? Yes. Uh, so this is how Glad organized the data. And let's put some nice background here. Change to this. Okay, so since we are in Vienna and how it's usually done in conferences, I took the tile that includes Vienna and Luxembourg. And you can see from the tiling system, it should be around here. Very, I don't find Vienna. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, of course. I have the data. Um, so from the Glatterling system, this is the tile 16 east and 48 north. And you may see in the code where I retrieve the files. That's the tile I'm specifying here. So now uh, should be C running. Okay. I'm, I mean, I already compiled the, so if someone is trying, you 
can let me know if you're ready to compile, if you're in time. Uh, is someone running in at the same time the code? You? It, you're done with the compilation or still uh, running? Okay. Then I will proceed trying to import the libraries. Okay. So this is only a bunch of import. Um, you may find some weird environment specification that's for multi-threading. And the library works only on multi-threading, it's not multi-process. This is uh, easier man management and also good enough for what is usually done working pixel base in uh, the special data science. And it relies on uh, the Eigen library for C++. Uh, I don't know if I'm going too much in the technical details, but it's targeting um, users to work at global scale with uh, Landsat data and also imply a bit of technicality. Um, here you have uh, some parameters that we are setting. So for instance, I took only a chunk of data, again, for the RAM limitation of the free version collab. The, um, the library is essentially, for IO, it's a wrapper from GDAL. So what it does is just mirroring the same parameters that the GDAL API in C++ has. Uh, so this is the offset, this is the size of the image. And here we specify for which years we want to compute these flags, this uh, sub-indicator. And in particular, we I specified until 2022. This is the range on which we have the data, so 2028 to 2022. We are working with NDVI. I pre-computed NDVI, but once could just compute it on the fly from NI, NIR and red bands. Uh, then there are some other parameters that I'm going to show later on in the workshop. But let's run the other cells. So here is a, just a couple of functions I defined to clean up a bit the code. Here are the parameters I just described. And here it's reading the data. Um, this function substantially takes a list of files that can also be HTTP in S3, like we have now. And this is connecting to our cloud um, that is running in our servers through this, um, through this IP. It will access each file separate on each thread. So if you have a 10 series, this will be parallelized on the number of files uh, limited to the number of threads that you have at disposal on your machine. And it will be stored in, the, in a matrix that is shaped as number of files by pixel. And yeah, now it took uh, a bit, but that's from the collab. And second, we have, uh, I want just to show you the data. So this is a chunk of NDVI. You may distinguish the Danube here. So you can see here, this is the first file, means it's the file for, for January in 2008. You can also, I can also show the list of files you have. And yeah, this is the first file associated to this image. So you can see it's NDVI. Uh, this is the method we use for reconstructing the images. No, some, I have the notification someone is in the waiting room. Uh, I will just get rid of it. Yeah, and this is for January 2028. And this is what we are plotting here. Um, second, we have, uh, uh, let, let me go to the methodology used from Transert for the computation. So the first phase is to compute what they call integrals 
um, uh, un that are substantially annual averages of the of the um, NDVI, and this is done uh, doing the, doing this average aggregate, this temporal aggregation. You just need to specify the aggregation factor of the input images. In this case, is the number of images per year, so six. And this is run on the fly. Then we go to the proper computation. So as anticipated, the sub indicators divided in three flags. The first flag is the trend. So first, the integrals are used to compute a linear regression toward the 15 years. Uh, this function is working on um, each pixel separately or a chunk of pixel. It computes linear integration, so it gives you slope and intercept. And these trends are then filtered using man and um, p-values. And maybe for people who are not in the topic, this will check if the trend is kind of monotonic and what's the probability that this is um, statistically relevant and monotonic. So we compute the main kernel here. I don't do any um, any correction for multiple comparison problem, but something should be discussed, I think. But I just followed what is done in the methodology here. So I filtered with a 0 0.05, thresh, 0 .05 threshold of p-values. And I set to zero whatever is uh, above 0 0.05 as p-value. And I take the sign of the slope to see if the trend is positive. So incre uh, increasing NDVI and better productivity or negative if we have a lower NDVI in, in the annual average trend. So probably a degrading area. And I plot it. Uh, maybe let me do this picture a bit bigger or everything a bit bigger. Let's see how ugly this is. Okay, hope you see it better. Yeah, and I just plot it just to be sure it's the same as before. Okay, so here you can see what is yellow, it's uh, improving, so at least getting greener. And what is toward blue is the grading area in terms of NDVI. Yeah. This is from 2008 to 2022. So it's 15 years. Uh, why, why are you checking uh, especially decrease in NDVI? Well, maybe, so this is urban area of Vienna, so probably some buildings or some crops deteriorating a bit. This greening, same could be. Yeah, I do at the end. Um, didn't work before, but I will do it. And yes. So second is the state flag. Uh, and let me go again here. So the second flag looks more toward the climate climate approach, not only to the trends. So it splits the data set in what is a baseline temporally and what is the what are the targets here? I think they hmm, specify the picture. Yes. So here we have a, we, we compute different percentiles. And for each percentile, we compare the baselines and the target years. And then there is some complicated calculation to compare them that I will not go into details, but you can find in the code. Um, so yeah, I really don't have time to go in details, but here you find all the code that explain how it's computed. What I think is relevant here, 
uh, is this compute percentiles. Uh, we implemented also these in C++ because the other libraries that we found in Python were not efficient. And this is really helpful if you use percentiles. Then again, we visualize this flag. And this is again the result. What whatever is plus is uh, increasing, getting better. What is in minus is degrading. And it's yeah, there are some pattern matching with the this, this is beta. This one is a um a comparison between a baseline years percentiles, and for each 10% percentile is compared toward the target year, so most recent years. So it's looking to removing some artifacts and compare also in more larger. It's just the beginning and end. Yeah, I mean, you can see here the comparison. It's the last three years against the, uh, the previous 12 years before these ones. Oh. And yeah, so this is the other flag. And finally, there is a performance flag that takes, um, that uses other splitting of the tile toward land cover and soil types. Here is only soil types. You can have a land cover map available. But so for any, for each combination of soil types, actually they're using the maps of Tom, and um, land cover, you get a unit. For each unit, you compare what's the 90% percentile. And if it's, um, if the trend, so if the average is below the half of the 90% percentile, then it's considered degraded. And all the free, but this, this flag in this area, it's quite flat. And, but the free, uh, Flags together are used to compute the land productivity trend, uh, sorry, sub indicator combined in this way. So whatever it's in this combination is considered improving. Uh, this is moderately stable or degrading. And this is done in this last phase. Yeah. And here I plot it, but that's the final result. We have the five classes here, and we can also save this in a, in a TIFF file that we can import into JS. I just need to uh, modify the bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, we run. So now if I download this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's correct tile. And I should be people are importing it in JS. Yeah, it worked. Let me change a bit the legend. Mm -hmm. Don't feel like that. By the way, um, huh? Yeah, I just took something random, but I should also use uh, not contiguous, but uh, discrete. Mm. 
Yeah. Maybe maybe color. Uh, maybe it's. Or also, I want something. Uh, this. Mm -hmm. This one. Okay, so that should be a bit more clear. So green areas is where it's. So, so zoom in somewhere it's like really red, and like a, a distinctly red. I mean, this is the Danube. Uh, but yeah, here's for instance, it's. Reddish, so means that there is a degrading area. Uh, we can see, yeah, this is mainly urban area. Let me remove this. Uh, it was the, the tiles. So, yeah, this is urban area, so it's very difficult to, see. yeah, so means that in the last 15 years. There is more trends, but that's mostly noise. I think more, more interesting would be some large chunks. Yeah, here, for instance. Mm. And uh -huh. Yeah, this is my mind setting. So maybe in the last 15 years, this was expanded or something. So can you 